Now, obviously, from the thumbnail, you could see this overpowered looking superhero who is blasting through stuff and electricity is shooting out of him. So who is that guy? A lot of you have been asking for this in the comments. Here's a video explaining the superpowers in my comic universe. So that's my character, Project Dan. And as you can tell, he looks like if Barry busting your girl Benson took steroids. His powers are pretty similar to what a regular bee would have. He can fly, he can stick to walls, he has super strength. Bees don't necessarily have that, but you know, he's... He's a superhero, so he needs strength. And then, of course, like any bee, he has electricity powers. I know that sounds weird, but it's gonna make sense very soon. It comes from a species I created called the Insectives. Half human, half insect. And this is now where I'm getting into interesting territory. Like, this is the this is the good stuff we're about to enter. On top of explaining my character's powers and going through some concept art, I'm gonna show you what it takes to actually create your own power system. Based on the years of research I've spent studying the best creators in the world, I compiled all that research into one chart. I'll reveal it fully in the end, but let's just start with the first part. Power source. Where do superpowers come from in your fictional world? Let's talk about where superpowers come from in a tangible sense. We're talking about like physical objects here. The kind of stuff you can hold in your hand and feel the power coursing through. Think mystical artifacts like glowing amulets, tech implants like in cyberpunk, or genetic enhancements that give you an edge over everyone else. It's like playing with the coolest toys imaginable except the toys give you crazy superpowers. In Green Lantern, members of the Green Lantern Corps draw their powers from the ring and the emotional spectrum with each lantern wielding a ring powered by a specific emotion. Green is the color of will, yellow is the color of fear, and red is the color of the pins on top of Drake's house. Spider-Man has his webs come out from his web shooters in most versions of the character except for the Raimi trilogy where he had organic webbing which came out of his actual wrist. I'm probably one of the biggest meat riders for the Toby Spider-Man movies but this was one weird change from the comics that even I can't defend. Ugh. Brother, uh. Organic webbing wouldn't come out of his wrists if we're being accurate to where webs come out from spiders organically. But uh, yeah, I, I, I like being monetized, so I'll, I'll let your imagination fill in that gap. In Harry Potter, wands are the power source for magic. You can't just shoot magic out of your eyes or fingers. And on top of that, you have to couple the wand with the correct magic spell, aka the magic version of voice search. Except if you mess up what you're saying, Instead of getting the wrong search results, you turn your cat into a tiger and yourself into tiger film. In my own comic universe, the main source of the superpowers, especially for my main character Project N, is something called a swarm. Now the swarm is an organic bio suit that basically covers a type of person called an insected, which I'm going to get into in the next few points, but I'm going to explain what an insected is. But basically, what you need to understand is that that swarm, that exosuit that comes onto them, it's basically indestructible. And usually when they're in a stationary state, it's uh, called a swarmlet. And actually, here's some of the designs I have for the swarmlet for the different types of insectids. Now, my main character is obviously a bee insected, and insected meaning half human, like insect human hybrid. Swarms are triggered immediately, they sense any type of danger. If you shoot a bullet at an insected, the swarm comes on immediately. Swarms are actually organic, not nanotech, which is a question I keep getting from people who've read the comic. But it's, in a sense, it's just an organic suit that comes on. It's actual biological, and on top of that, it's connected to the user's genetics. So you can't just take somebody else's swarm and use it on yourself. The second question you ask yourself is, is there any theme or similarity of the different superpowers in your world? In some worlds, all the powers revolve around elements or animals. Yeah, that kind of a thing. Uh, for my story, it's insects. First, let me explain the point on similarities before I get into my own. For example, in X-Men, mutants have like a wide range of abilities due to like their genetic mutations, ranging from telekinesis to weather manipulation and laser beams that come out of your eyes, that allow you to do the coldest superhero landing of all time. Oh my god, how didn't he break his neck? I might actually have to watch this show now. The point is the theme is mutants. All mutants have some kind of special ability, but for them to be a mutant, they have to have been born as a mutant. Like, they were born one. They didn't get into any accident. They were literally just born mutants. That's the connecting theme. The same thing with Avatar. Benders can manipulate all the four elements, water, earth, fire, and air. And each bending art has its own unique style and philosophy and history. But like, the theme is they're all controlling elements. It's the same thing with 
with Naruto, with ninjas. Ninjas can all harness chakra. Chakra being the energy that's within every living being. And they can just use it to, you know, make supernatural feats like walking on water, summoning giant animals. They all have the same theme, which is chakra. And, you know, gang signs. Lots of lots of gang signs i don't understand how how their fingers are still intact like i mentioned before the theme in my world is basically insects and the different types of insects have their own version of special abilities but in general they're all insects and the type of insects is social insects because the creators of the swarms wanted something that could be translated into human beings to allow them to be controlled in a group just the same way ants have a hierarchy or so do bees, so do termites, you know, those kinds of things. There is usually someone at the top, someone at the bottom, and everybody follows the person at the top. It's the type of strict hierarchy they wanted when they were doing the experiments, but we're going to get into that. The, the main theme, insects. Origin of the superpowers. So now that we know the basics, we can now ask ourselves the question, where are the superpowers from originally? Like who... Who created or discovered the power? A good example is something like in Avatar The Last Airbender. The lion turtles are those ancient spiritual beings and they're the ones who gave humans the ability to bend the four elements through energy bending. In Spider-Man's case, Peter Parker or even Miles just basically get accidentally granted with powers when they get bitten by the radioactive spider. He's basically like a werewolf in a way, you know, the same way werewolves get their powers from being bitten. Although for once I think one day someone should switch it up and instead of an animal biting the man and gaining powers the man bites the animal you know maybe like a story about an alternate reality where a random guy who lives in a city with a lab where they run secret experiments on viruses proceeds to go to a market near the lab and bite a bat this what could go wrong by biting a bat a what could possibly go wrong Second question is what events led to the creation of the superpower sometimes it's a radioactive accident that gives a random guy some superpowers other times, it's a radioactive accident that gives a random guy some superpowers. And other times, it's a radioactive accident that gives a, a random guy some superpowers. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. Famous examples would be The Flash. Barry Allen gains his super speed after being struck by lightning during a particle accelerator explosion. In Fantastic Four, Reed Richards and his team basically gained their powers after being exposed to cosmic rays during a space mission. But sometimes, you know, you can always go the X-Men route. Just, just, just say it's a mutant thing, you know, like quirks in My Hero Academia. Well, like everybody's just born with a quirk, except for the main character. In my own comic, a company called Nexivo basically conducts a lot of secret illegal experiments on a bunch of people and that's what they use to create the insectives. Now a lot of people ended up dying during these experiments and they did a lot of illegal things like they broke a lot of laws a lot like a lot. So now that they gave them the powers they decided uh, not only are they too dangerous because they start rebelling against Nexivo they need to exterminate them. So that's where the origin comes from the company Nexivo creates the insectives. Types and variants. What are the different types and variations of powers in your fictional world. In Avatar, there's four variations of elements. There's earth, water, fire, and air. Obviously, there's a few extra ones like lightning bending, lava bending, blood bending. In general, it's just the four elements. In the Green Lanterns, they have the rings divided by the emotional spectrum. And in cases like My Hero Academia, you have quirks, or even in the X-Men, you have mutations where it's just like so random everywhere. Endless possibilities of superpowers. The other question you have to ask yourself is, are there any factions based on the different and variants of the power so, like going back to the green lantern example you have the sinestro core who use fear there's the blue lanterns there's the red lanterns there's the green lanterns in avatar you have the earth kingdom the fire kingdom the air nomads the water tribes it tends to make your story more interesting as i mentioned before my power system is based on insects and insectids and there's four main types of insectids there's the locust the termite the ant and the bee each insected faction has their own strengths and weaknesses locusts have leg strength termites have the highest durability and these mandibles on their arms ants have the most upper body strength and the bees have flight as an advantage locust insectids have the strongest leg strength of any other type of insected and these these power legs are used for everything from powerful kicks to superhuman leaps. While they do have the strongest legs, they also have the weakest upper body of any swarm type. They're still stronger than the average human, but they're weaker than other insectids. 
So in a fist fight, a locust is losing to an ant. Their main fighting style is definitely going to look more like taekwondo. Both genders of locust insectids have power legs, but the male locust insectids do have stronger legs than their female counterparts. They're very similar other than that. It's just a slight strength difference for the men. Locust insectids are the only type of insectid with no queens or hierarchy. They're definitely less organized than the other swarms and tend to be very anti-authority. The type of insectid who are the biggest threat to the locust insectids are definitely the bees. This is because bee insectids can fly and actually catch them in the air. So on top of that, Female bee insectids have stingers, which are venomous. So the locusts and the bees tend to not like each other. Termites have the strongest armor of any other insected swarm. This means in terms of durability and defense, they're the hardest to hit or hurt. They're like tanks. You could throw a building on them and they'd probably just walk away. They also have the second strongest upper body strength after the ants. So it's ants first in terms of body strength, then the termites. The termite swarms also have mandibles that can be used to decapitate. They can pick things up or chop things up. They can also be used as tools in specific situations. They also have an acid that they produce when they die and self-destruct. This acid can melt and destroy the other insected swarms and is the main ingredient used in something called NXD, which is very important. I want you to keep that in mind. This was actually inspired by the fact that in real life, um, termites do kind of have like a suicide bomber thing where they actually do explode or release uh, deadly acid when they, whenever they fight ants in actual nature. So that was what inspired me to add that into termite swarms. Out of all the insected types, the termites do tend to be the most peaceful. They're generally more chill, avoid direct conflict, and they'd rather just eat food, dance, and have fun. Ant insectids are their main enemies and they don't get along at all because of culture and the fact that the termites are also the only insectids who can take on ant insectids in a fair fight. Ant insectids are physically the strongest and have the most upper body strength. They can effortlessly lift objects that weigh 10 times as much as themselves, and that's just them on easy mode. They can still do 50 to 100 times themselves. This like really gives them an advantage in combat. And because of their upper body strength, majority of their fighting style is punching or throwing things. Their power punches are capable of hitting other insectids meters away. Ant insectids can be extremely destructive if they want to be. By combining their strength, you only need around three to five of them to punch down an entire skyscraper actually. Unfortunately, they also tend to be the most aggressive and violent. They just, they just want smoke constantly and they prefer using threats to fight and often bully other insectids. Their sworn enemy are the termites, even though the ants have the strongest offensive strength, the termites are a close second and on top of that the termites have the toughest swarm, so an ant really has a hard time hurting a termite swarm compared to the others. My main character is a part of the bee faction. Bee insectids are the only type of insected who can fly. And this gives them a really good advantage in combat since they can attack their opponents from the air. However, they do have the least overall strength of any insected. So in terms of raw physical strength, they are probably the weakest. But they are still much stronger than the average human. So they can still pick up a car and throw it around. But they are still much weaker than other insectids. They have an advantage of using a stinger which is actually venomous and can cause a lot of body swelling. If you're not treated with anti-venom, the victim could literally swell till they explode. While female bees do have stingers, their male counterparts don't. And this is actually based in nature, because in nature, bee drones do not have stingers at all. And it's just the females who do. Male bee drones do have an advantage, is that they fly much faster than the women. And due to that, they can actually produce electricity as they fly because of their wings. This actually happens in nature, and it's how pollination happens. Basically, bees flap their wings so fast that they create a static charge and that is what allows nectar and pollen to jump onto them. Which is why you see my character flying and shooting all this electricity out and he is making things float. The electricity that male bee drones produce can mostly be used to slightly stun other insectids and humans, but beyond that it's not really useful before Project 10, who has the fastest and most powerful wings of any bee drone ever created. Basically, he's gonna get OP. They dislike the locust insecteds the most. Again, this is because they can both take each other down. A locust insected can take them down in the air with a kick. Limits and rules. What are the physical or mental limits of the superpower? As much as I'd love to be like no limits, make them as powerful as possible, it tends to be more consistent when you add some kind of rules or limitations. For example, in Harry Potter, casting spells requires precise like wand movements and incantations. That's an example of a rule. 
In Avatar, you can only bend one element, except if you're the Avatar, you can bend all four elements. That limitation creates rules, and the rules make the world more believable and lived in. You're also asking yourself, what can't you do with the powers? For example, in Avatar, if you take an earthbender and then you just drop them in the middle of the ocean on a boat, they're kinda cooked, unless there's rocks around. They really can't do anything there, and they're limited. In the Project N universe, the different types of insectids are limited to only being able to use their own swarm. And a human being or any other person who's not connected to a swarm directly can't just pick one up, can't pick up a swarmlet, put it on, and then try and use it. This is because the swarm is directly connected to an insect's DNA. In fact, the swarm is literally bonded to the person in a way. They can take it off, but they definitely don't even like other people touching it. I call this the swarm bond and it's gonna be a big part of the story. It's already kind of uh, mentioned in this scene where you have a woman that David is seeing picks up his swarmlet and then he gets so mad he throws his phone at her. He doesn't even realize why he's so angry. It's literally the swarm bond. The other limitations are like the, the, the powers and abilities I give. For example, the bee swarms not being as strong as the others. The other types of insects not being able to fly. All this is just to make the world feel consistent and lived in and the, like there's actual rules. Costs or weaknesses? What are the kryptonites or like the silver bullets of the power system? Like, you know, literally silver bullets like werewolves. Where you shoot a werewolf with a silver bullet, they die. You stab a vampire with a stake, they die. In DC Comics, Superman, his greatest weakness is kryptonite. And it's basically this radioactive mineral from his planet. When he gets near green kryptonite, he starts getting super weak. Red kryptonite just makes him ridiculously aggressive. And pink kryptonite, uh, <laughs> well, uh, pink kryptonite, let's just, uh, let's just say it gives our boy Superman uh, a free BBL, if you know what I mean. What? Turns him from a uh, Superman to a uh, super thick. No diddy. No, no diddy. No diddy. In my comic project, N, there's a chemical called NXD, which is created by Nexivo, which they use to hunt down insectids. NXD is the only substance that can actually break down swarm to the point where it creates an opening for them to be able to kill the insected inside. It's like a very acidic substance that they shoot at you and then it explodes and then it starts melting off the swarm. If you remember before, I mentioned an acid that comes out of the termite insectids after they die and they explode. That's what NXD is made of. My vision for Project N is actually to take it from being just a small indie comic with a very niche following right now into a big story that a lot of people know has action figures, has an animation and I'm planning around over 10 volumes of the story before I conclude it. Now, obviously, making YouTube videos for the algorithm is super hard. So I'm not able to post here as often as possible because of all the crazy editing you have to do and planning and thinking about the algorithm. And I know some of you guys will really want to see more content on the process behind how I'm building my own universe. So I've created a Patreon where I'll be uploading more raw, uncut, behind-the-scenes vlogs, showing the process of me building this thing into something huge, where I don't have to think about the algorithm and all that other stuff. I just give you guys the most raw and authentic version of this. So videos will be coming out there earlier. There'll also be exclusive content as well as Discord access so we can talk. We'll also be having private live stream sessions there. You can even exchange ideas, especially if some of you guys have ideas that you could give me for the Project 10 universe. Yo, me, I'm down for that. So check out the Patreon. It's in the link in the description. But if you're new here, I think you should check this video out.